Salwete Omnes, this is the Martian Geek, and welcome back to another episode of Mega Man 11. We only have two more Robot Masters to take down, and they're both fairly easy. So, let's go after Tundra Man. He's stylish. Notably, he's a figure skater, and people don't tend to skate on Tundras, but yeah, his obviously is the ice level of the game. We have these drifting snowflake enemies. Another one of those things. Ow. And yeah, there are ice physics, but honestly, as ice sages go, this one is really not that bad. Surprising considering a later gimmick. We have more of these. And now apparently these can move. I'd forgotten about that. Spikes. You know, if this is an ice stage, those spikes are probably made of ice. Can't Mega Man just melt them? There I go again, applying logic to a 2D platformer. Big bolt, nice. Now here you want to make sure you don't slide too far and into the spikes along the wall. I think, I don't, I don't think we've seen, well, I guess technically we have seen this enemy in Torchman stage, but now it definitely looks more like a bunny. So, maybe it was supposed to be a bunny all along? So here's the main gimmick of the stage, we have these wind gusts that come up intermittently. If we're careful here... We can get a one-up. Be careful here. We can get a big bolt. Yeah, that looks more intimidating than it actually is. I don't actually need that life energy, so I can just skip that. And now we have some camouflage. Ow! Camera drone things. Camouflage. Ow! I am taking a lot of damage here. Well, now I need that health pickup. Don't need that weapon energy, though. Hello, Sniper Joe. Nobody likes you. There's probably a more elegant way of dealing with that. Wrong energy. Right. So later in the stage, there's ones that stop and go, and I don't think that's true for this room. Yeah, they try to be trollish there by putting spikes at the end. Summon dog. That was dumb. And now it's time for the mid-boss. Who's probably one of the more difficult parts of the stage. It's an elephant. You want to try to stay on one of the ice pillars, preferably the tallest one. Another boss that spins. And yeah, it can blow too. What's with the mid-bosses in this game having so many invincibility frames, anyway? I can just waste that third one, because I'm pretty sure in this game they respawn. Ow. And now the wind is... in our face. Ow. Those darn birds. I know there's a better way of dealing with that. Nope. Yeah, here we go. Now the wind isn't blowing all the time. So when it's not, we can just safely jump across these. Ow. Can I quit getting hit by, like, every one of those things? So now, you know what? I might have noticed the W tank over there. I do want that, and... We need to go with the wind to get it. Oh, I didn't know those things could turn around. I 
As you can see, the wind even affects the snowflake enemies. And let's get out of here. Watch out for the low ceiling. Watch out for the Sniper Joe pot shot. Oh, I'm obviously not getting that bolt. Jeez, I never thought about how many of these enemies are in this stage. And nothing wants to drop health. And for the most vertical room of the uh, level. Goodbye. It's vertical and it has a bunch of the drones. And they really like to respawn because it's easy to fall down. Choice of two paths here, but it doesn't much matter which one you take. I don't need the weapon energy, aside from refilling Rush, I guess, and I could get down there that way anyway. So this is probably the trickiest Windy Room. And I think it is continuous. Ah, shoot. Can I still go back? I'm guessing no, I cannot. I wanted the E-Tank, darn it. And the 1-Up. I don't think I can rush death that. But maybe I can? I can, but boy does it take a lot of energy. Dog is very tired. Oh well. I made it through the stage without losing a life, but <laughs> not doing so well on health for the boss. Now, start the music. I'm like a rose, frozen in ice. Oh, I don't think I'd heard that quote. So, Tundra Man has a, spe a specific pattern that he'll do. Dog is a you know, he's a skater. He's showing you his, you his routine. I don't actually remember exactly what his pattern is, but figure it out as I go. Fast spin across. Uh, slide and then spin. Jump. Two low jumps. And speed gear time. Very short and easy to dodge speed gear phase. Oh yeah, now he changes his routine. Ah, oh, dang, I was so close. I jumped too soon. So yeah, Tundra Man is very pattern-based. So he's pretty easy to deal with. Ha <laughs> ha. Alright, dash, slide and jump, jump, low jump, that uh, slid too early. Wow! And I forgot the routine. See, that's the thing about pattern-based bosses, is ideally, they're easy, but sometimes I do forget the pattern. I think you can still hit him while he's doing that. Okay, now she should... Yeah, I did remember that he changed it up, it up that time. And he does that. And I jumped into him. <laughs> Elegance! Oh, what a drama queen! Well, relatively speaking, of course. You can see the dinosaur skeleton in the background. The stage seems to be kind of a... I don't know what you'd call it. Like a... 
just an area with a lot of fossils or something like that. Kind of like Freeze Man stage in Mega Man 7, I suppose. But yes. You got a new weapon, Tundra Storm. Create a Sub-Zero Blizzard around yourself, damaging any enemies inside. Right, with the power gear active for a massive blizzard that covers the screen. Sadly, we can't activate it in midair, but this is basically the charged storm tornado from the original Mega Man X. With the power gear, it's a screen clearing weapon. Whoops. See, that's what you use to deal with Torchman stage more easily. Because it can actually freeze the fire waves temporarily. I don't think that's how fire works, but sure. Alright. But yeah, like I said, that stage was overall pretty easy. <laughs> the hardest part about this will be coming up with a good video title. You know how few puns you can make about Tundra? Anyway, I'll see you next time as we beat the final Robot Master.